All right, we've got the GMC Envoy, the 06 variety. It's gonna unlock. The fella says, um, well, he's got a note in here. Let's see what he says. Well, he says the same thing I was gonna tell you. Uh, money lights on, hard, starts hard after warmed up, is what he writes. And that's what he told me when he called. So, well, uh, tiny bit of an extended crank there. Money light is on. So you've got to rip the name tag off. Could you guys go crazy about that kind of stuff? So we'll stick that in our pocket. And uh, before we even warm it up, let's see. Let's see why the engine light's on. At least see what code's in it. And you know, does that make sense for a hard start? And if it doesn't, we'll take it for a shake and see if we can duplicate the complaint. Grab a scan tool. And then I go through a system scan here. We'll see what we say so far. Just the two codes in the uh, PCM there. Let's see here, power train. We have fuel system lean, fuel level sensor circuit high voltage. Okay, looks like our fuel gauge is working. Uh, let me pop back out of here and we'll go right into the uh, power train control module here. And let's look at uh, just our fuel trims, would be the smartest thing to do and see indeed if it is running lean. So we want our long term, we want our mass airflow, our short term, our loop status, intake air temp, see if they got coolant temp, engine speed, coolant temp, get our barrel pressure. Um, we'll grab a couple oxygen sensors. And that should be about all we need as far as looking at a lean code. Of course, certainly a lean code will make them it's a little difficult. Let's just see here. We haven't let the vehicle warm up. All right, so barrel looks good. Engine coolant temp seems right. Intake temp seems right. So our long-term fuel trim is, is pretty high. So that tells us we de definitely have a lean condition just based off long-term fuel trim. So we'll let it go into uh, closed loop here. We'll see, so our short term, so we're in fuel control. Yeah, we're definitely in fuel control because our short term is around zero and our long term is at 25. So it's definitely running lean. I think what I'm going to do before it gets uh, too warmed up here, the smart thing to do, dinger go away. The smart thing to do is, is look at this kind of data in generic OBD2. Um, so we're going to go back and do that just to be sure we're not having any kind of, you know, substituted values. So it's always a wise idea to do that. So we'll figure out where they hide that on here. Right here, OBD2. We'll hit OK. And I'm going to pop in here and look at the exact same data just to be on the safe side. And like I say, the reason we do that is to make sure that we don't have uh, substituted values. Uh, the codes on this thing have been cleared. There's only uh, the drive cycle's not finished. Um, but oftentimes, and I think we've showed this on our channel before, that when you're in OEM data, if there's a problem, you know, with a, a coolant sensor, stuff like that, sometimes they will fill in uh, just a substituted value from another sensor, from a calculated value. When you go into generic OBD2, you won't find that. It's going to give you just the raw. The raw dog as far as what's happening. So I'll get this loaded up here. So everything here looks the same still. Okay, fantastic. And I see as the idle's coming down, our short term starting to climb a little bit. Makes me curious about a uh, vacuum leak. I, I think this thing probably has, sounds like the big 4.2 liter in it. So our mass airflow doesn't look too far off. Perhaps we have a uh, fuel delivery issue. Let's just do a visual inspection on the hood before we take it for a shakedown.
mouse nest under there, of course. Temperature's just right outside. Just one thing I do want to check before we get cranking. We want to pop back into um, OEM data because we see that the drive cycle is not done. Um, where were we? GM. And the thing that we have to wonder about there is, you know, the EVAP's not done. Is the canister purge valve stuck open, you know, drawn from the fuel tank, you know, creating a lean condition? You know, it hasn't set a code yet, so I'll pop in here and we'll take a look at that. Uh, we want to look at fuel level because we had that code too, which that looks like it's working. Fuel tank pressure is what we mostly want to see. Um, and then we need something to let us know that it's live. So let's go here. And what we want to see is no, no purge command, which we may have now because it's been running enough. But most importantly, we want to see that it's not drawing the tank into a big vacuum. Let's see, it's 11%, fuel tank pressure is at 1.5 volts. So we're good, we know it's not stuck wide open. If it was, we would see the tank pressure being, you know, really brought into a vacuum. But we can see the purge is only open at 11% and this kind of indicates that as it goes on. We see the level sensors working, so. Okay, something, uh, just something to note, that's a vacuum, a vacuum leak, so to speak, that you can't find with a smoke machine real quick but you'll see it here in live data okay we'll go give her a shake down see what it feels like see if we have a lack of power or anything like that he didn't have any complaints about that but we'll just see what the fuel trims do when i drive here oh boy that <laughs> sounds like every wheel bearing in it's bad so far in the fuel trim, long term and short term is just about where we left a little bit worse. 25% um, we'll call it on the long term. In the short term it's about 15%. So it is making some corrections. Wow, these wheel bearings are really bad. I would have to say probably 80% of the cars that we drive or take on test drives have bad wheel bearings. So we're gonna come out here and do some full throttle action with it and just see what uh, See what happens there now when you're going doing some full throttle action you're not you're going into open loop so you're not going to be able to look at fuel trims but you can look at o2 sensors and see what they do and o2 sensors as i expected go right to zero volts so right now we are in a massive lack of fuel yeah because we should have went into power enrichment mode uh, but we didn't. Uh, O2 sensors went super lean. So that tells me we're probably looking at some sort of fuel delivery. Slowing down here, just kind of looking at some data. I'll come around the corner here and we'll do it again. I'll show you. rules out vacuum leaks uh, going to wide open throttle we'll slow down so we're not speeding too much we'll give her some beans I've got I put just one O2 sensor up on the screen here for you so we'll go full throttle and you see how that drops right off to almost zero volts we keep her at full throttle right now that should be pegged out about you know a thousand millivolts or close to it so then I let off the gas and we're gonna pop back up rich and then it should go into fuel cut mode probably and drop back down lean. But that whole that whole little segment right there, not good baby. So just looking at that data, I don't see any anything else that jumps out to me. Our mass airflow doesn't seem to be uh, skewed. We could very quickly just unplug it and um, take it for a ride and see if that changes anything. I don't think it's gonna. I think we have a fuel delivery issue personally 
because like I say wide open throttle eliminates the possibilities of a vacuum leak our barrel looks good coolant temp intake air temp everything else seems normal I think we're gonna have a fuel a problem do the same routine we'll look at just that one oxygen sensor we'll come out here and smash on the throttle don't see anything coming Chevy Thunder That's pretty definitive. It's not an input issue from the mass airflow. We're going to go back and focus our efforts on fuel delivery. So I pulled in here and put it in park that the gas gauge screwed up. It flicked right down. It said fuel level low. So that's probably, um, you know, the intermittent uh, fuel level sensor code. Pretty common GM stuff there, folks. According to service data, fuel pressure. 50 to 57 on the big 4.2 I've got the gauge in there it's kind of in a piss pot of a spot but I see somebody's been in here because I see it's missing a bolt down there I think I have it on where it's not leaking so let's take and turn the key on here let's see if it's spraying all over cycle the key on and off a few times here and survey says about 10 psi can't be that low, can it? Let's go like this. Let's go into active test, fuel systems. Let's back out of there. Output controls, fuel pump. We just want to make, I'm just flicking the key on and off. So we're going to turn the fuel pump on. I just heard a relay click. And we're at what, 25 pounds? Turn it back off. Just heard it click off and click it back on. Alright, so it looks like 20 pounds. Let's make sure this is the real deal. I got a pan here. Let's open up our valve. See if it's... Make sure it is actually on. And it appears to be. So that's the real deal, folks. Speaking of the real deal. What's up, Mrs. O? 20 PSI. Do you need to see me? Yeah. Alright, just a moment here. So I think that's that folks, uh, obviously hitting the max PSI of only 20, it seems to hold pressure, so that's good. Uh, regulator on these I believe is in the fuel pump. So at this point we need to make sure that the fuel pump has adequate uh, power and ground, and if it does, make the call on the pump. If it was a plugged filter, uh, we would see fuel pressure get up, you know, all the way up to, to full spec. Uh, especially just sitting here turning the pump on and off you know granted it may come up slow it would still come up so i'm not concerned uh really about a plugged uh, fuel filter on this one i believe this car still has a fuel filter so i say we pick it up in the air i do see a wire here that's just about chewed through uh, we'll pick it up in the air before i get too distracted and see if we can get to the connector on the fuel pump i don't know if we can um, but if we can we need to put in a substitute of load you know something around five amps you know headlight bulb see if it lights up nice and bright it's weird mrs oh it's weird what's weird making videos out there with phil's here does phil have something to say that makes it weird no it's just you know you're making videos in front of a new dude just, just You're makes, not, like getting undressed in the locker room together. I know. That's kind of weird too. I had to bring that up. Thanks. Yeah, that's weirder. Yeah, it's a little weirder. What are you drinking? Booze? Sparkling water. Oh. Well, anyhow, as I come and tell you that, it just makes it weird. People think I'm probably being weird. Yeah, you are. Alright. Just don't be weird. Good advice. Well, no beans underneath as far as getting to the fuel pump uh, I did get in there with a mirror and I could see that the fuel pump looks relatively new in the sense that somebody packed it all with grease you can see where the fuel filler uh, tube goes into the fuel tank 
and that's all covered with grease too so that tells me somebody's probably been in there uh, recently not you know like yesterday but at some point so what we're going to do is we're going to take the fuel pump fuse or relay out which i think is that one there number 41 yes fuel pump and then we're just going to throw a current clamp around it because that's the only thing we can do short of dropping the tank down to get to the connector so i think we'll figure out how this little guy works here we will go to low amps i've got one of these bypassing relays which we've used in multiple other videos but these ones have the current amp loop on it so we don't even have to find a fuse or anything we can turn it off we can stick it in place of the relay that is the right slot right yeah there we go we can turn it on the fuel pump should be running right now we will take our low amp probe here we'll zero it out we'll stick it on there and what I was hoping to see is about five amps, four amps. But with a fuel pump that we suspect is failing, it's not uncommon to see it at a low current drop, which we have. Let me get this here. Let's get the time on the screen here. And we can see we're hot, you know, we're pulling around with three amps, about 2.8. So general rule, average rule is about one amp per 10 psi we had about 20 some psi and you can see we're going about 2.8 amps so we still could be dealing with a loss of power ground back there but we're probably just dealing with a faulty fuel pump however we need to get permission from the customer at this point to a order a fuel pump see if perhaps the one that's in it is under warranty um, you know talk to them about stuff like that because this is about as far as we can go short of dropping the tank at this point Grab that baby. So that's it for now folks, uh, I did call the fella questioned him about the uh, You know whether or not it had been recently replaced he says no And I thought it was kind of odd because it looked like pretty fresh grease uh, in my opinion, you know, not a lot of dirt build up on it yet. So within, you know, the last six months, he did say, however, he had it at a shop three times now to have the fuel gauge replaced or to be repaired. And he says that they kept installing a used uh, part, you know, the fuel level sensor is what it sounded like. Told me where he took it. I thought it sounded kind of odd. I was like, sure, you don't want to call him and, you know, see anything, see if it's under warranty. Uh, the shop that he's going to, isn't really one that uses a lot of used parts i wouldn't think um and this guy didn't bat an eye at buying it you know an oem you know gm fuel pump that i suggested that we're you know potentially going to have to do once we drop it down and we can run a proper you know power ground check on it and then you know make a decision um i'm going to get the oem pump i'm going to get the oem fuel level sensor and then once we drop the tank down after the guy drives it for a while to get the gas out of it because it's filled right to the tippy top right now then we're going to run a couple more checks and if everything tests out good powers and grounds are good we're going to throw an oem you know pump and level sensor in it and this guy's problems should be resolved so i guess that's it for now i don't know when he's coming back maybe a week or two maybe we'll see you back when uh, when he does that i don't know i'm sure we will but for the meantime cruise on down into the comments the questions the comments the insta the facebook everything you got put it down there and just remember viewers if i can do it you can do it. Thanks for watching.